John was to the adult film industry what Elvis Presley was to rock and roll. He simply was the king. He's one and only king. No one else measures up. He was the king. John Holmes was the biggest male star that there was. He wasn't that good looking, he wasn't that smart, he wasn't that brave, he just had a huge dick and he could fuck. I'm talking about a dick from my elbow down. The fun part about John is that he wasn't that type of Hollywood guy. I don't think he was even ready for it, right? He was he was born in rural America. He was just a farm boy, right? What, what could go wrong? How could he go to Hollywood that quickly? Well, I think we all know the answer to that. John Holmes was born on August 8, 1944, in Ohio. He had a gift of a very large appendage, which eventually made him the person he came to know as Johnny Wad. Following the divorce of John's mother and father, John became the victim of an alcoholic, abusive father, forcing him to join the army at the age of 16. After serving three years in the military, John decided to try to make it big and move to Los Angeles, where he began driving ambulances, eventually meeting his first wife, Sharon Holmes. Originally, the couple's marriage was going very steadily, until John was approached to do a short film because the person directing it knew about his large appendage. After John's first scene, he had realized what he really wanted to do with his life, which was, in end, become an adult film star to make it big. The first interview John went to was in front of Bob Chin, the legendary porn director. Once they met and Chin had seen his large appendage, the introduction struck off quickly and immediately they wrote a script called the Johnny Wad series, which became very successful. Once Johnny Wad became successful, John Holmes became famous and the partying started. John Holmes, Big John Holmes, yeah. What would you do if you were sized like John? I'd probably do what he's doing. Really? Yeah. Wouldn't you do, couldn't you work in a liquor store or a factory or something? Doing what? Do you know who John Holmes is? Yes. What do you think of him? Fantastic. John Holmes is attractive and, I don't know, I think he appeals to a lot of women. He's just, you read about him everywhere in all the magazines and everything. At this point, John Holmes is on the top of the industry and very famous in the Los Angeles region and all over the world. At this point also, he could only go down because he was at the very top, nearly making $1,000 a scene, which made him the most highest paid actor in the porn industry at the time. Oh, he was very sweet and gentle. John was a jerk. I never knew John when he wasn't doing drugs. What actually was in his mind as he saw four people slaughtered? John had an extremely low self-esteem. He was an interesting man, um, very sociopathic. He backhanded me in the mouth so hard that, that, that I, my tooth went through my lip. He was proof that all men are not created equal. Thank God for John. In the late 70s and early 80s, cocaine came and slapped America right in the face. over. In that summer, when John was heavily addicted to base cocaine, formerly known as crack cocaine, he began hanging out with the Wonderland gang at this house, located in the Laurel Canyon of the Hollywood Hills. At this house, a series of brutal killings forced John Holmes by Eddie Nash, this man you see here, to commit serious and brutal killings on his friends. The Wonderland murders, in a way, I I think is what really ended the lifestyle and career of John Holmes. At the time, he was 
heavily induced into the drug culture, right? Um, doing base crack very often and owing a lot of people money, um, resulting in him having to complete the hit for the Wonderland gang on Eddie Nash, which eventually turned back on him and forced him to witness his friends being brutally murdered with eight inch lead steel pipes and having and witnessing their head just completely bashed in uh, gratefuls really. So after that I think really John Holmes was done. Mentally he was kinda of messed up and physically he wasn't there because of the drugs and alcohol that was deteriorating his body. And when he got AIDS, um, I, I, it was over anyways. Yeah, so I think once the Wonderland murders came in, the drugs came in, it was over. You know, it was a bit of a Hollywood cliche. When you look back at somebody's life like John Holmes, um, obviously the media played a huge role and a vital role in his life and career. Without the media, John Holmes really would have been, wouldn't have been anything. The porn industry obviously was rising at that time, right? The very start of it the 1970s and 80s, and I really think that without media, John Holmes would have been nothing, would have been anything, really. Um, the media gave him this image, that this cast a spell really on him, that gave him this superhero type personality, but at the same time, I don't think he really was that type of person. He was a skinny guy, just a normal blue collar kind of guy right from the farm, but the stardom and Hollywood, like derived from the media, made him a person that I don't think he was really ready for, but people loved and just really took advantage of him. So I think obviously the media made his life by giving him all these powers and showing him and really exposing him to the public in a, term, in a sense of, I guess, underdressed way. But at the same time, I think the media also killed him and ruined his life and did more, more harm to his life than good broke up his family, right? It caused him and his wife to divorce. And it also it also took him down a path where he couldn't really accept himself because people were just using him and wanting him for his, his package, really, not his personality. And I think that's really what led him down the road of drugs and violence, resulting in a pretty, pretty sad life. There have been two Hollywood films based on John's life, Wonderland, made in 2004, and Boogie Nights, made in 1997, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, starring Mark Wahlberg as John. Everyone's given one special thing, right? Everyone's blessed with one special thing. I want you to know I plan on being a star. A big, bright, shining star. Eddie Adams from Torrance. Yep. Jack Horner, filmmaker. I make a exotic pictures. In 1977, a kid from nowhere made me think about your name. Well, my name, yeah. Something a little pizzazz. Dirk Diggler. Good name. I like your name a lot. Had a dream of getting somewhere. Jack Horner has found something special in newcomer Dirk Diggler. So let me just pop in this A track and you just give a listen and tell him what you think, okay? It was a time when disco was king. These are the ones. These are great. Yeah, those are really cool. Are they lizard? No, they're Italian. Do you like my shoes? They're pretty cool. Sex was safe. Woohoo! <laughs> Pleasure was a business. Cut. Terrific. Nice oh, work. And business was booming. And the award for best newcomer goes to Mr. Dirk Bidler. <laughs> Wow. Goodbye, 1979. Hello, 1980. Are you ready? But in 1980... Come on, you puppies! The party was over. You are fired! What? You're fired! You're fired! It's jealousy, it's deceitfulness, it's vindictiveness. But, I mean, God, what can you expect when you're on top? No, wait, 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 wait. Love this part. New Line Cinema presents... A portrait of two decades in the life of a business, the days of a dreamer, and the nights in between. Boogie Nights. 
People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Women seem wicked when you're unwanted. Streets are uneven when you're down. When you're strange.